Hi, my name is Mark Brosens. I'm a producer with The Agenda with Steve Pakin on TVO, and today I'm joined by Norman Regetli. He's the Director of Policy and Stakeholder Engagement for the Rural Ontario Institute, and we're going to be talking about public policy issues in rural Ontario. Thanks for joining me, Norm. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, Mark. Glad to have you. So, first off, a lot of the public policy issues that rural Ontario faces starts with demographic issues. So, what's the demographic situation in rural Ontario today? Well, um, to make a broad generalization about all of rural Ontario, um, you know, is it, pretty difficult because there are some areas, you know, near urban uh, Ontario which are experiencing growth and, you know, in, incoming development, and there you're seeing population growth going on. Other parts of rural Ontario, uh, you know, Lake Shore, Cottage Country, you've got people that had recreation homes retiring there, so you've got older folks moving in, so the population's going up, but it's a, it's a older demographic. And then in sort of agrarian countryside, if you like, the small town, rural Ontario, um, in a lot of cases, uh, population is uh, stagnant or declining in some parts of southwestern Ontario, for example. So um, you've got a population breakdown that is generally a lot older and missing a good part of the youthful population, that uh, 19 to 26-year-old population, which are going off to post-secondary education. So well, the way I like to put it is that uh, rural Ontario is currently at the where uh, Ontario as a whole is going, Canada as a whole is going. It's, uh, it's older, it's grayer, and less youth. And that's what's happening uh, slowly over time in the rest of the uh, country, but uh, it's already there in rural Ontario. So how does that situation affect other public policy areas? Well, um, I think a couple of things, just straight off the bat. Um, we, it, would like, it would be much better if we had more community college campuses and accessible post-secondary degrees that uh, people could uh, access without necessarily having to move, but that's a limited impact, I would think. Uh, there's a lot of communities in Ontario trying to attract newcomers trying to be uh, as welcoming as they can to um, folks that, that come from elsewhere. So I think at the provincial level, our immigration strategy um, should be promoting um, better information to immigrants that have settled in urban Ontario about job opportunities in uh, smaller towns. There's often lower unemployment in some uh, rural communities as manufacturers look for those skilled employees and can't find them locally. So there's a number of dimensions that we could be um, working on positively to sort of counteract those trends. On the other end of things, you know, what, what uh, less working age population means for rural Ontario is that the tax base is, is really pressured. So um, we really need to think more broadly about how we finance uh, and sustain our infrastructure, which is something we can talk about in more depth later. So when we think about rural Ontario when it comes to economic issues, we often think of the farm. Is that an accurate characterization of the economy of rural Ontario? Well, um, it depends on whether your definition of rural Ontario includes the north, where there's fairly limited agriculture and there's other types of uh, primary resource industries going on, the forestry or the mining sector and tourism and so on. But um, here in southern Ontario, um, the agricultural sector is very important economically in rural uh, communities. But from an employment perspective, it's only about 6% of uh, rural employment. So. You know, when you drive through the countryside in rural Ontario, you can see all the farms and uh, uh, you think that that's what people do there, but uh, only 6% of people are working in the ag sector directly. Others might be working in, you know, service industries that serve agriculture, but generally speaking, um, you've got more people in, uh, in retail and in uh, 
manufacturing and in construction and trades and in uh, education and health and the other service industries, then you, then you have directly employed in agriculture. Again, we forgot to talk about this in broad generalizations, but broadly, how is the economy of rural Ontario doing today? Well, by and large, you know, the rural economy uh, rises with the Ontario economy and sinks with the Ontario economy if it's sinking. But we've seen some um, fairly alarming recent trends in, in, where unemployment in, uh, in rural Ontario, in small town Ontario, seems to be diverging from urban Ontario. We've heard that uh, some of the job creation statistics uh, have been showing positive signs in Ontario and Canada. And yet the unemployment rates in rural Ontario seem to be taking a double dip. Uh, so I don't know if we actually know why that's happening at this point, but um, it is concerning. So I, I think some of the reaction you saw, for example, to the, the horse racing industry issue where people were concerned about 50, 60,000 jobs in rural Ontario that are associated with the care and feeding of horses, um, you know, got a pretty strong reaction. I, I think if you think about those unemployment statistics, you can understand why. So do you have any ideas on how to grow the rural economy? Well, I mean, economic growth and comes from a number of different sources. Um, the manufacturing sector that is in uh, remaining in rural Ontario is a pretty significant proportion of the jobs and pretty a key driver. And they're advanced. They're if they're if they survive the um, manufacturing downturn, they're probably already in some pretty advanced markets. They're probably pretty inv innovative and pretty competitive. Um, and we need to keep that uh, competitive advantage, if you like, going. And government, what can governments do about that? Governments can, you know, make sure that the the business infrastructure, the economic infrastructure, is there. And I'm talking about uh, broadband. Um, you know, any manufacturer is putting their catalogs out, dealing with suppliers, downloading big CAD files potentially if they're in in an engineering. Type uh, function, so we need uh, high-speed broadband in rural areas, just like in urban areas, and that investment hasn't been made. So we're losing um, the potential innovation that that uh, that the internet brings everyone, and uh, that's an important, uh, I think, uh, high on the agenda for rural Ontario. Um, there's a number of other. Uh, supports, I would say, for regional economic development strategies that the, the provincial government could offer. Um, you know, most local municipalities and counties and the business communities, the chambers and the um, business improvement areas associations and so on, have a pretty good idea of what the strengths of the local economy are and have their own um, regional economic development strategies or local economic development strategies. The implementation of those strategies, I think, is where there's a lack of resources, and the provincial government really does have to support that local effort uh, in a more consistent, ongoing way. Whenever you talk to people from rural Ontario, you often hear uh, concerns about infrastructure. It's one of the things that come up frequently, roads and bridges and the like. Uh, what is the state of infrastructure in rural Ontario today? Well, I think if you listen to the Rural Ontario Municipal Association uh, about the state of municipal infrastructure, there's quite a bit of concern about, um, you know, underfunded, um, you know, infrastructure deficit. So we've got a lot of uh, bridges that are in need of repair or maintenance, and um, that how to finance that um, is a real challenge for a lot of rural municipalities. And some of them are talking about, you know, having to close some bridges. And um, that means that, you know, the milk truck that goes and collects the milk or the, um, the, the other movement of goods is uh, going the long way around, if you like. So, so there's uh, 
there are some real issues with that infrastructure, but it's also um, things like you know sewer uh, capacity in, in small in small towns, you know, which are on municipal services and so on. So with the um, without economic activity and commercial growth in, in that industrial commercial sector, it's all on the residential tax base. So increasing taxes to pay for uh, infrastructure isn't a recipe for um, keeping that population around if, if they're mobile and they have choices of where they're going to live. So it could be a pretty nasty downwards spiral if we don't um, think it through from a more, you know, how do we sustain the finances? And it, Rome has been advocating um, pretty directly and pretty consistently that federal and provincial government cost share programs for infrastructure. We saw them really blossom during that time when we were looking for stimulus. But that, now it's kind of drying up and uh, we need more consistent, stable funding across uh, the you know cost sharing, I guess, between the three levels of government. The, the level of government that takes most of the taxes doesn't maintain most of the infrastructure and that's the federal government. So. I think there needs to be a revisiting of that breakdown of where that money goes. Uh, just to finish up, uh, because you brought up uh, the broadband before, and I'm just saving this to the end because we're done now. Uh, th throughout the uh, conversation, we've heard your audio all the way through perfectly, but you've frozen up about four times uh, in terms of the video. So I'm wondering, your connection here, is this a good internet connection for rural Ontario, just so people understand what we're speaking about? Um, we believe our connection is pretty good. I don't actually know um, what my uh, download and upload speed is. It's probably the upload that's uh, um, not as good as the, as the download, because I'm seeing you pretty good. Uh, so depending on where you are in rural Ontario, your broadband can be highly variable. There's one small grade operator in, in Hanover, uh, Whiteman, who uh, offers uh, really good um, high speed. Stratford and Tilsonburg have installed fiber. You know, So local uh, utilities have been doing some great uh, jobs in certain places, but the big operators have been um, you know, we, we miss uh, certain parts of the landscape um, because they're not easy to serve. But, you know, if you think about telephones and how that was managed, they're natural monopolies, these kind of network systems. And back in the day, um, we connected everybody. Um, and I don't see why we should be taking a different approach to, you know, the newer forms of telecommunications. And uh, we, we really should be putting... Uh, some more pressure uh, on uh, the, the provincial and federal government to manage the monopolies that, that, that are in the telecommunications sector so that um, service is, is going to everybody on an affordable and accessible way. Well, thanks very much for your time. That's Norman Regentley. He is the Director of Policy and Stakeholder Engagement for the Rural Ontario Institute. Thanks, Mark.